Hello. Wonder has he here? Back in the desert. That's right. I'm finally back in the peace and quiet of Death Valley after spending six weeks helping my mom move. Uh, or it's relatively peaceful and quiet. I think they're doing some kind of work at the resort over there because guess what? Everything's about to reopen here. After a long, broiling, miserable summer, folks have finally started emerging from their caves, trickling out of their houses, and well, the weather's finally cool enough to where people can start doing work on their properties to get ready for the upcoming tourist season. Most people out here make their living off tourism. There's a lot of hot spring resorts, and well, like anything with water involved, they take a lot of maintenance. And since before you know it, all the winter snowbirds are gonna start arriving to stay here all winter long, well, they need to get these resorts in tip-top shape. And that's why I think I've been hearing the sound of machinery humming in the distance. But other than that, it's real peaceful out here. But I mean, what do you expect? Living on the fringes of civilization. Anyway, because I was gone for so long, I have a ton of catching up to do. I went into Pahrump yesterday and picked up my mail, which because it was my birthday last week, I had a ton of. And today I have to go run some more errands that unfortunately I can't take care of in Pahrump. I have to go to Vegas. I've been living out here in the middle of nowhere on the fringes of civilization for three years now. Long enough that it feels surreal to drive back into the city. It's such a weird contrast coming over the mountains that separate us from the Vegas Valley, leaving the vast ascetic desolation of the open desert and descending into the writhing, seething madness of Sin City. But it lures you in gradually. First, you see it shimmering in the distance, shrouded by a miasma of the weird lingering energy from everything that happened here and now stays here forever. And then gradually, the first tendrils of the insidious suburbs draw you in. Endless tracts of identical houses, gas stations, liquor stores, places to buy stuff, stuff which we don't have out in the desert and which is what seduces me back here at least once or twice a month and every time i come back i feel more and more like a stranger in a strange land i lived in vegas for 21 years right in the middle of downtown so i was used to the hustle and bustle the constant hum of traffic sirens helicopters slot machines and that weird energy. But now that my senses have been purified by the silent sanctity of the desert, I see and hear it through different eyes and ears. It's almost overwhelming, but it's also invigorating. When I left Vegas, I said good riddance to that toxic hole. But now, after three years on the edge of Death Valley, I've come to realize that toxic holes are a state of mind, and you might never move far enough into the desert to escape. I've now thoroughly and genuinely come to appreciate Las Vegas. The restaurants, the hospitals, the airport, the relatively low cost of living, and the abundance of goods and services which is what brings me back to this incomparably bizarre city today. That's right, it's time to get new tires. And I am not looking forward to it, because these KO2s ain't cheap. <laughs> I'm expecting to pay around $400 per tire. Plus, I have to get a new spare because when I had my shocks redone, got the Bilsteins put on, it lowered my suspension a little bit, and so these are a little bit too big. They've been rubbing on my mud flap. So that means I have to get all four tires replaced, plus the spare, 
because the spare is the old size. So overall, I'm looking to spend somewhere around $2,000 today. Ouch. <laughs> but it's all part of the cost of doing business. And instead of going to Walmart, like last time, and getting screwed, I decided to come to discount also known as America's Tire in other parts of the country. I don't know, I've been going to this chain for a long, long time and they've always done right by me. I don't know why I thought I'd save a few pennies by going to Walmart last time. Mm. Dang, look at that. I'm knuckle deep in these treads. It's amazing what $1,700 will buy you nowadays. And I kept my old tires to give to my friend Better Call Paul. He does a lot of rescues of stranded motorists out in the desert where I live. And even though there's not much tread left on those tires, well, there's enough to get somebody out of a dangerous situation and back to civilization. And besides, it's always good to do a favor for Paul because you never know when you're gonna need a favor from Paul. Anyway, I'll give the old tires to Paul when I get back to Death Valley later this evening, but first I have a few more errands to run while I'm here in Las Vegas. Because like I said, there's some things you just can't do in Pahrump and this is one of them. Man, it is kind of fun being back here in Vegas though. It makes me wonder why I don't come here more often just to hang out, you know, have some drinks, people watch. But actually, I am planning a mini sort of staycation here in Vegas mm, about a week from now when they implode the Tropicana. That's right, look at that. They're getting ready to implode the Tropicana. They've already cleared most of the rubble. All that's left are these two hotel towers, and in the finest Vegas tradition, they're gonna blow them up, or I guess blow them in. Isn't that what an implosion is? Uh, about a week from now, so I am planning to come back here for that, and I will have at least a couple drinks while I'm here for that. I mean, dang, it seems like every time I come here, there's either a new hotel going up or another old classic going down. Whew, finished all my errands, and now I gotta haul ass back to Death Valley because I'm late for our planning meeting for our upcoming fire department fundraiser event. Okay, I've mentioned this fire department fundraiser event a time or two over the course of the last few months, but the meeting went well last night and it's actually shaping up to be a super fun event. Okay, if you've been to the events we had uh, earlier this year and last year, well, you know, it's kind of a funky little town, but we do the best we can. And this year, well, everybody really stepped up. We have a full roster of bands and performers. We got food. We're gonna have ice cold locally brewed root beer from the Death Valley Brewery, as well as a whole bunch of arts and crafts vendors, and of course, plenty of beautiful desert scenery. So I thought it might be fun to go down and take a look at the site where we're planning to hold the event. It's just right around the corner from the compound, and just past the old stack of tires I have waiting here for Better call Paul to come pick up. That's right, the guys at Discount Tire were kind enough to bag these up for me and stick them in the back of my rig. I actually thought it would be funny if I climbed into this stack of tires and surprised Paul when he came to pick them up. You know, if I popped out of the middle, you know, kind of like a stripper popping out of a birthday cake only, well, I guess a little less exciting than that. Anyway, Paul said he'd be by later tonight to pick up these tires when it's not so dang hot once the sun goes down. Let me tell you something. I'm shooting this video on October 1st. That's right, it's October. Pumpkin spice season. Sweater weather. Not, at least not in Death Valley anyway. Out here, temperatures have still been in the 100s. I think it was like 108, 
109 today. Ugh, seems like it's never going to cool down, but it will. And the good news for you is it should cool down very nicely in time for our fire department fundraiser, which is set for November 2nd. By November 2nd, it just might <laughs> be pleasant. And I sure hope it is because I was thinking of bringing my vintage travel trailer down there this year and doing my meet and greet from my trailer. <laughs> you know, since I didn't get to go to Burning Man this year, I thought it would be fun to bring my trailer down to the event site and set up my whole area in front of it like I do at Burning Man. So if you want to come say hi, you can come hang out at my Burning Man camp <laughs> right here on the edge of Death Valley in the middle of nowhere, right down the street. <laughs> like I said, this event is taking place right down the street from the house at the end of the block at the Tacopa Hot Springs Resort. Okay, this is the Tacopa Hot Springs Resort. Not to be confused with the Tacopa Hot Springs Campground, which is the next resort over. Anyway, this is where our event is going to be held. Uh-oh. It's Ross, the one-legged miner, making his own YouTube video. Oh, he stole my idea. Well, it's okay. We can use this as an awesome opportunity to collaborate. I can help spread the word about our event on his channel. And, well, he can spread the word about whatever he's up to on my channel. Hi, Ross! Long time no see. Yeah, it's been a while. How was your summer? My summer was hot. Hot? Was Didn't you go to Europe? Yeah, okay, well, it, was, it was a hot time. It wasn't as hot as it was here. You weren't here either, what do you know? It was hot where I was too. All right, Ross, uh, you're promoting the event as well? I am promoting the event as well. Oh, thank you, Ross. So you've, you've become a real member of this community. I live here, I'm responsible for it, and we'll let my six or seven viewers all know about it. Oh, now, come on, you have more viewers than that. Okay, so we're going to be doing meet and greets, right? You're going to be are. down here? Yes, I will. And what are you bringing? I'm bringing my 1952 uh, Willys Army Jeep down here. Wow, your old crusty Willys Army Jeep. It's How not about crusty. That? Does it run? Technically. Okay, but you're going to be able to drive it down here? Hopefully. Oh, okay, wow, this could be exciting, folks. Uh, what about the compressor? Will you be towing that out here? No. Oh, okay. That's a longer project. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I'll just let Ross blather on to his six or seven followers and show you guys where we're having the event. Okay, so this big parking lot here in the front of Tacopa Hot Springs Resort, it's right off of the highway. That's Tacopa Hot Springs Road. It's paved, real easy to get here. And then this whole big lot here is going to be full of vendors and artists and then we have this stage down here, and that's where all the bands are going to be. Okay, this stage is so cool. Look at this. I'm not sure who built this. I think it might have been a group of volunteers, but some people came out here. And <laughs> what well, kind of reminds me of like the country bear jamboree from Disneyland, only if all the country bears were on acid, <laughs> which, in my opinion, would make the country bear jamboree way more interesting. Anyway, this is the stage that all these... Performers are going to be doing their thing on, and look how cool this is. I guess it's okay if I just walk right up here. <laughs> I don't know who did this or where they got all this cool old wooden furniture, but, you know, looks like you're in an old saloon, these really cool old trunks, this badass old armoire. Wow, I didn't even know this was here. Wow, it's in good shape, too. Anyway, this is the stage. This is where all the music, there's going to be poetry, there's going to be... There might even be some stand-up comedy, I'm not sure. Oh, look, there goes my sister. I guess she just got off work from the museum, and she's headed over to the brewery. That's right, Death Valley Brewing, a.k.a. the coolest dusty little desert dive bar you ever did see. It's just right down the street, about two miles that way. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't do the event in a place where everyone was around it, so we're having an after party at the brewery because we don't want to... We don't want... Dan, the brewmeister, and the folks who run the Kit Fox Cafe right next to the brewery, we don't want them to feel left out of the event. And because we're having the event over here in the Hot Springs District and not in downtown Tacopa, like we did the flea market, well, we're going to have an epic banger of an after party at the brewery when this formal event is over. So this event goes from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday, 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 November 2nd. 
and then around, oh wait, I think it goes from 10 to five. And then at six, I'm gonna head over to the brewery and so is my sis and all my wacky friends who may or may not have one, one and a half or more legs. Uh, we're gonna tie one on and raise the roof and just have a grand old hoedown. So if you wanna join that, plan on staying a little bit later and meeting us down the road. Okay, Ross, uh, will you drive me over to the brewery? I would be happy to. Oh, thank you. All right, we made it to the world famous Death Valley Brewery. This is where the after party is going to be held and there's gonna be delicious home brewed craft beer and New York style pizza made by the Kit Fox Cafe. Thanks for the ride, Ross. Now let's go have some margaritas. That's right, they're having a special party tonight with tacos and margaritas. But for the event, you can expect beer and you can expect root beer and you might even be able to expect cider for those of you who don't like beer and you can expect pizza and lots of it. And moreover, you can expect to have a real good time. Just ask this guy. It's gonna be a blast. <laughs> Told you, everyone's coming to this event. So mark your calendars for November 2nd, Saturday, 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 from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Tacopa Hot Springs Resort with the after party right here at Death Valley Brewing. I sure hope to see you there. Oh my God, that was so cheesy. You gotta do a different ending. Okay, he's right. I can't end the video there. That was totally half-assed. And I think, well, I'll be honest, I think it's because I had margaritas on the brain. And let me tell you something, those margaritas ended up being awesome. They're talking about making it a regular thing, doing Taco Tuesday. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll be able to make that happen, but if they do, I'll be their best customer. You know, we actually lost a restaurant out here over the summer. We used to have a really good little barbecue place over at Delight's Hot Spring. Unfortunately, that closed, so we're down a place to eat. And so if the folks at the Kit Fox Cafe continue to do those delicious tacos on Tuesday, well, I will be one of their best customers. Anyway, I couldn't end this video without doing a few more updates. I mean, I've been gone. Well, I've been gone six weeks. And before that, I was gone pretty much the entire summer. Every year I try to leave here when it starts getting too hot which for me is usually around the beginning of June. So yeah, I was basically gone all summer, June, July. I came back for just a couple weeks in August to take care of business. But basically I've been gone the entire summer. And so a lot of stuff has changed and I would be remiss if I didn't mention. Well, first of all, look at our pretty new driveway. Remember back in, I guess that was back in May when the good folks at Morales Aggregates came and paved our driveway for us. Well, look at this. My sister redug her drainage trench all the way across the parking area and then down the side here, like a kind of like a French drain, I guess, so that when it does rain and we do get some doozy rainstorms, if you've been watching for a few years, you might remember we've had some really gnarly monsoons and even a hurricane since we moved out here. Oddly, it only rained once this whole summer. I mean, I wasn't here, but my sister was, and she told me they only had one big rainstorm, and that was just mm, a couple weeks ago. And the good news is, I guess her drainage system worked like a charm. I guess the idea is all the water that comes down, well, first of all, our compound is sort of built on this hilltop that they just leveled the top of, but they didn't exactly level it perfectly level, so it slopes this way. And so all the water now gets funneled into that drainage channel and down along the side of the driveway there. And then we had a neighbor, our good buddy Ray from Therapeutic Hot Springs. Shout out to Ray and Therapeutics. If you're looking for a clean, tidy place to stay when you're in town, check them out. <laughs> no dirty hippies need apply. Anyway, Ray came over with his backhoe and dug this really big trench going this way, which I guess that funnels well, I don't know, somehow it goes into this trench and goes across the driveway and down into that 
same drainage ditch. So that our driveway doesn't get completely destroyed in the next monsoonal rainstorm. Anyway, that was one thing I wanted to share with y'all. And now I have one more stop to make actually before I wrap up this video. I can't believe I forgot to go check in on the folks at Villa Anita because they have some very interesting developments. Okay, Carlo actually told me I should come over. Oh, hey, Lucy. Hi, Carlo. <gasps> oh, you got a golf cart. Yeah, we've had it for a while. This was a gift from uh, Dr. Laura. Oh, it's from Burning Man. This is from a Burning Man art this car. This is a Burning Man and one of the... Oh, uh, look at that. One of the original founders uh, had this and then... Oh, so this, art, this golf it. cart belonged to one of the original founders of Burning Man, huh? Wow. How about this? This would be fun to go cruising around town. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, we should. Like, oh, my cart. God. So you're going to make curtains? I'm going to do curtains and it's going to just be... We... And I want to I see like little hanging things. And yes! Stuff. They will see us coming from a mile away. Okay, this is a great golf cart, Carlo. Yeah, it's but fun, that's it? not why you invited me over. No, it's not. <laughs> so you have you have something else going on here? Uh, you have another we situation? Do. We have a, a, a family of cats that have moved in. A family of cats. Now you have all these dogs and it's not a problem that these, these cats... Well, they're over there. How many cats are there? There's... Uh, there's like, I don't know, five or six. I think she had like oh five dear. or six. That's right. No sooner did we manage to adopt out all those puppies than a bunch of kittens showed up in need of rescue. And even though they have their hands full trying to run an experiential art museum and bed and breakfast, Carlo and Jack are so kind-hearted they could never turn away an animal in need. Look at that, these Anna pups Anna. have gotten so much bigger. They did keep a few, right, Jack? We kept a couple. We kept a few. Oh, look at that. They are so cute. But I bet you guys don't let them <coughs> anywhere no. near these kittens, huh? Oh, no. Dwight, what do you think about these kittens? <laughs> <laughs> Making some uh, solid potatoes for dinner here, huh? Mm -hmm. His guests are from Germany. <laughs> okay, but before sitting down to dinner with his guests, Carlo took me out back into the yard to see the kittens, who had just randomly showed up one day from somewhere in the desert and were hiding out with the mama cat under an old RV. But when Carlo started shaking out some kibble, the shy little kittens started popping out of their hiding places one after another, except for one little baby with special needs that they were keeping separate in her own cozy bed. They call her Ginger Rogers because this poor little kitten has some kind of problem with her hind legs. They think maybe a coyote might have tried to get her and severed some of her spinal nerves or something. And maybe that's why the mama cat brought her here to Villa Anita. She knew it was a safe refuge. But despite the fact that this stripy little cutie can't move her hind legs, that didn't stop her one bit from going after that nummy kibble. Apparently, Ginger was in really rough shape when she first showed up, but after the guys took her inside and hand-fed her with a syringe for a few days, she started to perk up, and that's why they named her after Ginger Rogers, one of the most nimble-footed dancers in Hollywood history. Because even though she might not be able to move very well right now, if the guys at Villa Anita have anything to do with it, this little kitten is going to be running around playing with her brothers and sisters in no time. Even if it means building her a little set of wheels. Seriously, we're going to take this little kitten to the vet and see what they can do for her. And if we have to make her a set of wheels, oh, we will. that's what we'll do. If you'd like to contribute to Ginger's medical expenses, or her new set of wheels, you can send a PayPal donation to Villa Anita. I'll put the link in the description to this video. Carlo and Jack were truly humbled by how generous all you dog lovers were when it came to helping out with the puppies. Now let's see what the cat people can do. Okay, listen, Carlo, I gotta go, uh, but before I leave, what do you want to say about these kittens? I want to say that 
they need homes. So anyone who really wants a beautiful cat, they're so <laughs> from the wild, you know? Like, they're like, truly. they are kind of half feral, Death yeah, Valley kittens. But they're not like uh, vicious. No, like, they're not. Saw... The mom and the dad are right there with them. They're yeah, very sweet. There's and... like five or six yeah, of them maybe even. At least. So anyone who wants to come out, spend the night, uh, bring a cage. Let's 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 have one come into the cage, take two home, uh, <laughs> take it to your vet, get the first shot. How old do you think they are? Adopt them. They're oh. like six weeks. No. Oh, like, not even four weeks. They're like maybe five. Oh, okay, know. four or five week old um, kittens. I'll take I'll take her in Ginger. Okay. To the vet, uh, probably like Saturday. Okay maybe even Friday, mm -hmm. actually, and then we'll know for sure, and then okay. we'll, we'll find out okay. exactly Okay, I'll pass that information there. along as it becomes available. For now, we know there's five kittens that need homes, and so if you wanna take an adorable little kitten into your heart, hit them up. Okay, bye, Carla. <laughs> love you. Mm. Thank you so much. I'll I be back you. to go for a ride in that golf cart. Oh yeah, oh yeah, bye, uh, baby, I love you. <laughs> It's never a dull moment here on the edge of Death Valley. And since I'm going to be setting up my burning man camp for the fire department fundraiser meet and greet, well, I figured maybe I should wear one of my wacky costumes. Uh, I don't know. They're pretty adamant about this being a family friendly event. So they would probably frown on my electric vagina. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> Even if I just end up wearing an old flower sack, I'm still looking forward to meeting as many of you as possible at the event. Okay, again, it's set for Saturday, November 2nd, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. with a bangin' after party over at Death Valley Brewing. And a bunch of my friends are going to be here, including my sister, Ross the One-Legged Miner, Wandering Gypsy, The Vic Meyer Show, and I think a guy named Desert Trails who has like 50,000 subscribers is also coming, if you follow him. Anyway, if you live in Las Vegas or Pahrump, you can just drive in for the day but if you're coming from farther away, there's still plenty of rooms available at Amy's Tacopa Hot Springs Resort, Ray's Therapeutic Hot Springs, Delights Hot Springs, Villa Anita, the Tacopa Hot Springs Campground. And for those of you who prefer to camp for free, we are surrounded by beautiful BLM land in every direction if you just want to boondock. There's plenty of options. So if you'd like to come out and meet some of the quirky, interesting characters you've seen in some of my videos, well, come on down and see for yourself what it's really like here on the edge of civilization.